Okay, let's look at an example. I'm going to use the textbook's example 13.1 right here. Now, this textbook has a lot of good examples. Um, a lot of graphical examples, and it's, uh, the explanation is quite clear. Uh, I'm going to use some examples in the textbook, and I'm going to use some extra examples, uh, just so that we have good mixes of different types of problems. Okay, example 13.1 on page 116. Now you just create right here and it's subject to a pulling force of 400 newtons and it's sliding on the ground. Okay. And obviously you can imagine that this crate is gonna it's gonna go this way. Alright? It's gonna slide to the right horizontally. The mass the crate is given, 50 kilograms the kinetic coefficient of friction is given as 0.3. And you're asked to find the velocity of the crate okay, after 3 seconds. Okay, that is, you start pulling it from rest. That is, initial velocity is 0. After 3 seconds, what is the speed of the crate? Okay, so first of all, realize that this is a kinetics problem. You have forces acting on this particle right here. Okay, you have this pulling force, P. Okay, you have a mass given, so you have a weight. And you have a kinetic friction coefficient, which means that friction, friction force, okay, um, will affect the motion. So all these forces are external forces and it affect your motion. Okay, now, we want velocity, okay? Time is given, three seconds. How do we get velocity? Knowing time, okay, and knowing initial velocity. Well, equals zero. Think back in chapter 12, kinematics. Okay. The case where if acceleration is constant, <coughs> that's a special case, right? For constant acceleration motion, well, you have three equations, right? They will allow you to solve for velocity. In this case, how about this equation right here? Okay, v naught is zero. Time is given. So velocity is what you like to find. The only thing is, what is this acceleration? If it is constant. So, here, using second law, okay, hopefully you can find this constant acceleration. Okay, and solve for it, and then come back to this equation and solve for velocity. Okay, let's get started. So, follow the procedure in okay, step one through six. Step one, define coordinate system. Now look at this motion right here. This crate okay, will have an acceleration of this way, okay, horizontal acceleration and velocity. Okay, velocity changes, of course, right? So I'm going to define my coordinate system as such. Just x, right, going to the right. I can also define my y coordinate system as going to be uh, going up, if you like. Okay? Step two and three together. Draw three body diagram and kinetic diagram. Three body diagram. You draw just the crate. Same thing for kinetic diagram. Without any physical attachment. Right? Just to create as if you free up this, this particle, this crate, from any physical attachment. So no ground, no rope, or any other thing. Alright? Just to create alone. As if it's just hanging in the air. Next, for free body diagram, you draw all the forces acting on it. External forces. Now you have this pulling force, P. 
this way at 30 degrees and you have weight okay. and you have normal force right normal force okay. reaction force going back up from the ground and what else well you have friction force now, friction force is always in the direction that is opposite to the relative motion okay, between the particle and the surface. In this case, this crate tends to go to the right, which means that the relative motion okay, of this particle relative to the ground is to the right. Okay? So, friction force is opposite to that, so it's going to the left. That's your friction force, FF. Friction force opposes relative motion. Okay? That's all for free body diagram. Right? So you have four forces. Kinetic diagram, you draw the motion. More precisely, you draw the acceleration. This part, this crate right here, tends to accelerate to the right. That's all. Okay, so that's the only acceleration okay, that you have. <coughs> now, if you're not sh too sure about the acceleration and whether or not this is the only component, this is the only direction, you might wonder, hey, maybe it's accelerating <coughs> vertically too. Well, you could assume that too, if you like. Okay, put a x. A Y. Okay. To make it more general. Okay. Step two and three are done. Next step, step four. They're extremely important. You apply Newton's second law. Okay. Now this is a vector equation, right? So now you apply this equation in both directions before you actually solve for it. X direction and Y direction. X direction, okay? Summation of FX equals M A X. Okay, left hand side. You look at the free body diagram for left hand side, okay? So just pick out all the forces in the X direction. So, you have this negative friction force because it points to the left. Right, opposite to the positive x direction. So negative FF. Weight and normal forces, they are all in the vertical direction, so they don't appear here at all. Now here you have this pulling force, but at an angle. So you need to take the component. Right? And the component is in the positive x direction. And then the y component is positive y direction. Okay, so that's P y. So, so that's your px. That's all. For left hand side. Now, for right hand side, m a x. Okay. Now, let's move this down a little bit. A little more. Okay. This friction force, f f. What is it? Well, from static, you should remember that FF is exactly equal to UK times normal force. Okay, so that's the definition of friction force. Okay, kinetic friction. Okay, to be more precise. So you have negative of UK times normal force plus now Px is your P cosine 30 degrees equals M A X. Okay. So here you have equation one where AX is the unknown. Okay? Meaning that everything else has to be found somehow, right? Well, let's try to find it.